Hello, Yakri here with another Dominions 5 video. So I want to talk about Mechon one more time before I, at least I move on to other things, uh, at least until I uh, do a actual like strategy and expansion video on them. Because uh, I want to clarify a couple things that I got wrong or missed. Um, the big one is that they have this special yearly event, right? Um, every year... In any city where you have an uh, ep epiphore, or ep epiphore, I'm, I'm totally pronouncing that super wrong, but uh, every year in a city where you have one of those guys, right, this event happens where your helot population is culled, you lose 300 population, and your unrest is reduced. I'm pretty sure the unrest reduction varies depending on how much unrest you have, and as long as you have a decent amount of unrest, which you probably will because... Um, you generate unrest in your forts it's better than patrolling actually for reducing your unrest now if you don't have one of these guys uh, in your uh, province you will actually gain unrest additional unrest you'll get a different event uh, that, that's at least what uh, one user said in dom4 mods form although i didn't i hadn't seen the event i don't know if it's an actual event or if you just keep gaining unrest because i haven't seen the i hadn't seen the event before not having one um you also get this assassin out of the deal. Uh, and these guys will have experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn, I can't get through one of these without coughing right now. Um, this guy will have experience based on the amount of units that they kill. And they will kill some of your units that are not patrolling. Some people said they would kill all of your dudes. Um, but I have left a bunch of these guys uh, just in the garrison in order to... Um, uh, this this on this game I've gone through a ton of turns let them passively gain XP so they would get promoted to Nimode Neo Demode status um and uh, they oh they don't all die that's that's just what I'm getting at they don't all die but um, some of them will be killed by these guys and they gain experience based on the units that they kill or at least I think it's in some way scaled on that uh, and they're free like free spawn assassins, right? Pseudo free spawn because the event is pretty bad, and you probably lose some units for it. Your units are not lost if they're patrolling, however, so there's that. They have a patrol bonus, so they could be nice just for their patrol bonus. Patrol bonus 15 makes them not too bad to just patrol with on their own. You could use them as free spawn scouts, and you could use them to bully perhaps human nations. Of course, these guys are going to have a hard time assassinating other giants or mages once they have decent research, right? Uh, because they're kind of shit overall, honestly. Like, good combat stat line, um but no protection uh, unless you give them equipment at which point they're not so free right um so you could give them equipment of course you could uh it's just that could, as soon as you're like putting like two magic items on these guys to make them good there that's kind of expensive actually so keep that in mind um but yeah overall the event is pretty good at reducing unrest right minus 38 unrest for 300 population loss actually isn't that bad uh uh, and it's certainly better than having an event that increases your unrest. So you want to keep an Epa4, I think it's Ep4, Ep4? Mm. around in your provinces so that your income doesn't go to crap. Uh, and so that you get your free spawn instead of just more unrest. Uh, now let's see. What else am I forgetting? Oh, yes, the promotion the stats. I didn't go over the actual stats, which I should have. Uh, someone in the comments of my video actually listed the stats. It was... Um, Fire Damon. Is that the same Fire Damon from the Giant in the Playground community? If so, hi. Um, he said that they just get plus four morale. Uh, yeah, I took a look at that, and that seems to be the case, unless I made a mistake double checking it. Um, they just get plus four morale, which is, you know, actually not. Is it plus four? Yeah, it is plus four morale, up to basic morale 10. It's only plus three morale, actually, isn't it? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, because they start at seven, I think. It's actually even less than he said. What he said. Um, for these guys, these hell peltists. Yeah, three morale. Um, and that's not bad. I mean, their morale is terrible normally. Ten morale is actually okay, but um, it's it's it takes a decent bit for them to promote, and it's a bit lackluster. I wish they gained some other bonuses. Um, so I'm a little disappointed in that overall. But you know what you're gonna do. Uh, it's it's neat that they have it at least. Um, and they, their human unit infantry are actually still pretty good overall for being um, just so cheap for the like quality of their gear and having like a basic malicious stat line at eight gold, other than the crappy morale. Excuse me. Okay. Um. Let's see. Was there anything else I, f I wanted to cover? I think I think that's like the main the main things that I didn't uh, I didn't get last time that I wanted to clarify. Um. 
Huh. Oh, oh, they have a national spell. Oh, the national spell, as I recall, is not very good. Where was it under? It's under conjuration? Shoot, I forget. I should have double checked, but I actually forgot this was one of the reasons I was making this video until just now. Uh, they also get a national uh, weapon that they can craft. They get the same, they can craft the spear that the Polymark has. Um, and there it is. Um, it's not very good. That's that's the that's the long and short of it. But they get it, which is cool flavor wise. Uh, let's see, the will of false pretenders. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, your dominion gets a conflict bonus. Now this is the nice thing: the recruitment limit in the God Slayer's dominion is increased by one. Oh, that gets into the other thing. Now I didn't double check this, but I had another game. Oh no, I did double check this. Okay, so uh, unless this has been no, no, there haven't been any patches. Yeah. Okay, so your recruitment limit, and this is something that actually probably reduces my view of the nation even farther your recruitment limit of these guys is four in your capital right but in your other forts it's only one per turn right really terrible right so that's the the gigant hot gigant hot plates only being one per turn is pretty rough uh in your other provinces on your other forts yes so the the natural spell that you get the enchantment the increase in dominion conflict bonus is not that great unless you do something crazy like you cast that when you already have like nine dominion baseline and a bunch of temples you're probably not going to be really pushing anyone's dominion in although that could be like a kind of a nice weird strategy to do with an immobile pretender uh, and a scales build uh just to kind of fuck with people like me who like to take four dominion and get a little chancy with things right um yeah that could be kind of neat uh but uh, the real nice bonus is that recruitment in limit increase right so that you can recruit two two guys per extra fort right now it's it's take it this way it's doubling the amount of giant units you can recruit but that spell is so late to cast and it's such a pain in the ass to get to i'm not really sure that's ever realistically going to happen in most games or really be worth it uh there and then let's look at that weapon the on the this guy so the god slayer spear the reason this is not that great is basically because i mean this is theoretically good but it's only versus sacreds and gods uh theoretically i could see a reason to cast that or craft that specifically to put on um your elder cyclopses to uh take down a god right like specifically if someone has a combat pretender that they're using to protect themselves early and i'm not sure what really what really maybe maybe marverni would be a nation that would do this but there's probably a couple nations that would take an early age like combat pretender to sort of protect them from being rushed and what you could do as um mechon in particular is you could then rush them right you could just say fuck it you know you, you get a bunch of gigant hoplites you get a you get some polymarks just you straight up just recruit them you don't put any gear on them you just have their their alteration researched and conjuration researched and their god slayer spears and you go in and you fight their god and hopefully kill it right and then uh, you overpower their units hopefully it's like a human nation some kind of nation that's going to have a hard time dealing with like your helot hoplites and your gigant hoplites right that have really good armor Oops. and uh you just go in there and you overpower them in the early game and try and get their capital so that you can uh, leverage that extra uh, money into uh, more military might and, you know, win the game. Standard stuff. Standard stuff. Um, since you have elite, uh, I guess the Hell and Hoplites aren't really expensive, but in either case, your mages are expensive. You're going to have uh, income issues with your unrest. So despite having relatively cheap uh, or cost-effective troops, you may actually have monetary problems. And so that income bonus will really help you since you're a mon nation with monetary problems that also has really good troops, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, other things to mention. I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, I probably even went into that with... Uh, too much long-windedness i think i'll do an expansion video on these guys and talk about some of the pretender strategies i think generally it's going to be either an awake expander probably or a maybe immobile but some kind of imprisoned scales bless or scales build <laughs> sorry uh and you could potentially take a mage bless like something that someone else mentioned i think i mentioned it as well was some um, Taking, taking unaging right would actually be viable because all your old age mages are also sacred and um the thing is that like 
I don't think their stat line is super great, but you could you could actually do something like these guys. The the Basilius aren't terrible options for uh, thugs, right? They they're not like great, but they're still giants and uh, they're sacred, and they have the right magic paths to do something, right? Uh, so you have your like maybe you get an Earth three one. You've got your Earth three fire two, just buff bulks himself up, and then uh, is also sacred. And if he's not old aged, and you like throw you throw in like. I don't know, blood surge and unaging, right? That's that's not too bad. Um, also, things like uh, leadership bonuses, right? So the polymarks are uh, have leadership 130. That's pretty good with Taskmaster 2. Now, they are cap only, so you're going to have some difficulty there. But um, you could do something like the Inspirational Leadership Bless from Fire is actually pretty good on these guys. Uh, and so that will increase your leadership to be like crazy high. So you can lead just huge slave armies. And with these guys leading the slave army, they'll actually have quite good leadership like uh morale bonuses right the morale will go from terrible to actually pretty decent um with the, all the bonuses from leadership and with the fact uh, i guess like the formation fighter things uh, from a different <laughs> isn't the same in dominions 5 but yeah so that'll that'll kind of offset that a lot um yeah i think that I think that pretty much covers it um and either way you can expand pretty well uh without an awake expander but it's just that uh since you benefit so little from blesses having awake exp an awake expander is only a small scales penalty for you essentially right like uh you'll probably have similar scales to what i have here uh if you have an awake expander i picked this guy for an, uh, something i was testing out but uh you can as easily do an awake expander like the earth serpent and have almost the same scales which are pretty good now um oh one point i did want to mention was that some people are suggesting you should just take turmoil scales um because you have tur you're gonna have unrest anyway and you have to patrol it all away i don't really agree with that because all right so here hear me out and i think that's, that's potentially an option uh, at least if you want to go um I'd say that's a bit of an option if you specifically intend to go a thug route and make a lot of thugs because you could get uh, luck three with your turmoil and then with your turmoil three luck three you will have a lot of magic gems and you can use it to make more equipment um, and that could be worth doing but here's the thing so with order three you get a bonus to reducing unrest right plus three unrest reduction i can't remember exactly how this works i believe it's just three unrest reduction per turn but essentially you're reducing the unrest that you're um gonna have on your fort provinces right you're reducing the unrest that you're going to patrol away it's actually i think about as good as gaining 30 population per turn effectively right with the way uh patrolling away unrest works so um order is actually pretty valuable uh and because that's that's worth quite a bit of income over time right uh it also means that at any given point at least if you're not patrolling your unrest down to zero you're, you're going to be gaining some income by not having that unrest now on the flip side if you have uh if you have turmoil three now here here's the thing turmoil three with, with a normal nation could be offset by decent province defense uh decent, decent decent province defense right and no uh unrest increasing events so if turmoil 3 however is increasing your unrest uh and you also have unrest increasing events right this is going to uh need to be patrolled away right and the turmoil you're gaining from turmoil 3 and so you're actually going the difference is going to be about 60 population per turn in your fort provinces <clears throat> which is not insignificant uh so i don't really like the idea of turmoil three on this nation i think they get pretty significant benefits from order uh and and the, the point about recruitment points not being too relevant for them is just kind of well you know except for certain nations that really need recruitment points that's not why you take order anyway it's because <clears throat> more income is useful and unrest reduction is useful even though it's not as good as growth of course uh so yeah yeah i'm not really a huge fan of the turmoil but uh it's not unviable i just think it's it's kind of rough on your uh population which is gonna cost you money in the long run okay that covers everything i wanted to talk about uh and uh 
Yeah, let me, let me know what you think. I don't think this nation is too strong, unfortunately. Although, I mean, it's not like every nation that's new to the game needs to be overpowered. And at the very least, they're resistant to being rushed in the early game because their units are good. And they're in particular very good versus sacreds and have some a little bit of special anti-sacred stuff with those God Slayer spears. And the fact that you could just recruit Polymarks and have them go and fight fight in the front lines. And they're, they're okay-ish battle mages. It's just that when they start to get forts besides their capital because their off cap mages are really bad and because of that recruitment limit it doesn't help them as much as it perhaps should in my opinion um especially with the unrest mechanic whereas other nations are going to benefit much more going into the mid game like as they expand and build up forts and stuff and so they're going to be in this kind of position where they're not that bad right when the game starts but they're, they get pretty terrible by like turn 20 i think um that's my evaluation. But, you know, yeah, we'll see. All right, Yakri out.